Hello everyone and welcome back to the Be Heart House. My name is Alicia. I'm coming to you from Tacoma, Washington, where I live with my husband and our Black Labrador. Uh, today is Monday, February 10th of 2020, and this is episode 73. So welcome if you're a new viewer, welcome back if you're a returning viewer. Uh, I'm hoping today to talk about a few knitting projects and some adventures that I've gone on around the state of Washington. So without further ado, <laughs> uh, let's talk about some knitting. However, I will give some further ado, <laughs> just a little bit. Uh, first of all, I am in the li um, dining room. I'm in the dining room of the house. Um, I'm set up here at our dining room table, which we've put in front of this glorious window, which is bringing in all of this wonderful natural light. So, yay! It's after 5 p.m. in the evening, and there is some natural daylight, and it's wonderful. So, uh, I couldn't be happier. The lighting is great. I have my natural light back again. But yes, I'm in the dining room, so you can see the kitchen behind me, uh, and the living room is over here, and um, I think you can see back there the stairs uh, going up to the second floor. So it is a nice, tight, little situated um, home here that we're renting. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to take advantage of this beautiful light that's coming in, um, and this room is clean. So we're here today. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, let me talk about my knitting, what I've been working on. So first let me share with you uh, my color work knitting on my socks. Oh yeah, see that looks really nice. Uh, so this is the second sock in the pair. And this is one of my uh, new designs that um, I'm hoping will come out in March. Uh, I think the green color will go very nicely with coming out in March. Uh, but I'm knitting these for my husband. So this is the second sock out of the pair. I've completed two repeats of the chart for the leg and it is now ready for the short row heel. So. I stopped at this point so I wouldn't be awkwardly placed in the heel, but uh, now that I have shown you, I can, uh, I can work on that. But yeah, this is a uh, color work sock, so it's got the patterning all the way around the leg of the sock, and I'm holding it this way. This is technically the top of the sock. Uh, I like to knit mine cuffed down. But yeah, it's, uh, it's coming along very nicely. The yarn that I'm using is, what am I using for this? Premier Yarns Serenity Sock in uh, black and green. I don't know if this green has a special name or if it's just called green. Anyway, um, I have it linked in the project page on Ravelry. By the way, uh, if you would like to see uh, my project pages on Ravelry or you would like to uh, know my Instagram uh, name or anything like that to follow me on social media or get in touch with me, all of that information can be found down below in the description box. So. Feel free to add me as a friend on Ravelry or just peruse my project pages. Totally cool. Uh, but yes, I do have that all linked over there. And yeah, so not too much. I think last time I showed you this sock, I had just finished the cuff and I hadn't started the color work yet. So this is as far as I have gotten on that. And then I have another pair of socks on the needles. Um, and I'm also on the second sock of this pair. <laughs> uh, so the first sock I did finish. I don't know if I showed you the finished. 
first sock, but there it is in all of its glory. Uh, I have not put this on the blocker yet. I've been keeping it in the bag because um, I'm using it as a reference for the second sock on how far to uh, knit the length of the leg and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, so this yarn is Red Heart is the brand. And Heart and Soul is the, I guess, the line of this yarn, uh, since it is a sock yarn. It is an acrylic wool blend, I can't remember the ratio. And the colorway is called Lake House. I believe it's called Lake House. But it has this pretty um, teal blue, like aqua blue. Uh, this tan color, purple, and then this burgundy. It's really pretty. But uh, what I find interesting is how the yarn is pooling. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, I don't know what's going on, but it's interesting. And we'll see how it uh, turns out. There's definitely a lot more pooling over here, and it Seems like it's doing more of a swirly stripe thing over here. But I can definitely tell my gauge is different. Not just by the way the yarn is uh, pooling differently, but uh, this just, the texture pattern seems a bit looser. So I think that's what's going on. I hope they fit okay. And hopefully after a good wash, they'll uh, look nice. But Yep, so I'm on the second sock. I'm probably halfway down the leg right now. Uh, and then I'll do, uh, it looks like I did a short row heel over here, so that's what I'll do on the second sock. No contrast color, I just, you know, use this yarn. I have two balls of this yarn and I just wanted to use it up as much as possible. So that's what I'm doing. And, oh yes, the pattern is Hermione's Everyday Sock, which, if I show you over here, maybe you can see, maybe not, because the yarn is so loud, but it's a really pretty um, knit and pearl texture stitch. It just looks really classic and is super easy to execute, uh, and it just adds a little bit of interest. To the sock so uh, that's the pattern that I'm using I'm just following that and Hermione's everyday sock is a nice free pattern available on Ravelry so if you don't already have it go check it out and add it to your library uh, so that's that but most of my knitting time has gone into my weekender sweater so let me just catch you up with some footage here on what I've been doing with my Weekender sweater. Good morning, good morning. It's Saturday morning. Don't touch me, I just got out of the shower. But uh, I'm gonna sit down and rip out this sweater because that's what I've decided. So I'm going to rip this whole thing out and I'm going to start over and I'm going to knit the next size down. So yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to show you guys my froggy experience. Did you that with me?
So it's Saturday, the 8th of February, 2020, and it's time for an update on my weekender sweater. So I did recast on this sweater after ripping out all of my progress. Yeah, that was something. Uh, and after ripping out all of my progress on the sweater, I did wait probably about a week to cast on again. Just because I was really sad that I had to rip out so much progress and I just needed to give that project a break and work on something else. So that's what I did. Uh, but I eventually came back around, recast on the sweater. The tubular cast on went so much better the second time around, <laughs> thankfully. Uh, and so I'm past all of that and in fact, I'm back to the point that I was before ripping out this sweater. So, I have finished the body of the sweater, and I'm now to the point of uh, splitting for the sleeves. So, uh, the Weekender sweater is a bottom-up construction. So, if I just back up a little bit so I can show you. Here we go. So uh, it is knit from the bottom up, so you can see the bottom edge right here. Uh, it is knit uh, wrong side facing, so the right side with the pattern is actually on the inside right now. And I'm sure there are instructions later on how to, you know, make sure we're keeping that in mind as we knit this. Um, but yeah, so I'm to the point where I'm going to split for the sleeve, so I wanted to show you my progress. I did make it back to this point. I am still continuing through knitting this. I have not given up on my Weekender sweater. And in fact, I decided uh, to knit this body actually one inch longer than the pattern calls for. So um, I'm hoping that small little change uh, is worth it. And I hope it doesn't make this too much longer. <laughs> than it's supposed to be because um, I know with this extra positive ease on the sides it might show up um, with the weight of the sweater um, hanging down longer than anticipated so hopefully that extra one inch doesn't mean that it's just going to be super long right if that makes sense so anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to split for the sleeves, and I'm really excited.
So I've taken quite a journey uh, with this sweater. I started it, made really good progress, ripped the whole thing out, started over, and I've since made really good progress, and I'm very happy to report that it is now the appropriate size for my body, which is good. So, um, yeah, I finished knitting the uh, body section from the bottom of the sweater up to where I split for the sleeves. And then, as you saw in the video, I did split for the sleeves. And guess what? I finished the top of the sweater. And it's off the needles right now. And all it needs are sleeves, which is insane. So let me just um, show you. Uh, oh, yeah. Here. I, so I don't have it on. But as you can see, it's very much a, um, a rectangle, <laughs> which is funny. I just find it funny. I've only knit a handful of sweaters, and they never look like rectangles. But yeah, so it has that beautiful slip stitch detail running down the front of the sweater. And if I turn it around, it has the same running down the back of the sweater, which is really nice. Uh, so at first you might think, oh, how can you tell the difference between the front and the back of the sweater? Well, let me tell you, because of the uh, high-low hem on the bottom. So there is a shorter hem on the front than on the back. Uh, and you can see I have not woven in any of my ends for fear that I had knit the wrong size yet again. <laughs> so those will not be woven in until the very, very end of knitting. So for now they will all stay. But yeah, so it has this split hem between the front and back, um, high-low hem detail. So that's how I can tell the difference between the front and the back. Otherwise, it's got this great reverse stockinette. Um, stitch and it has a like a kind of like a boat neck at the top uh, and then the bind off for the shoulder creates the uh, what's the word I'm looking for exposed seam it's like an exposed seam on the top which is intentional uh, and so, yeah, it, um, it fits super well, and I love the color, I love the yarn, it's, it was totally worth ripping the whole thing out. So let me just, um, pop a picture in here of me, uh, trying on the sweater this morning, and, uh, like I said, I still need to weave in all the ends on this sweater, so please don't judge me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's I haven't washed it, I haven't blocked it. I think that'll help take care of the, um, the ribbing at the bottom of the sweater wants to curl under. So I think after a good wash and block, it will fix that. And so the bottom won't look like, um, almost like, like a mushroom cap type shape where you know it's just wanting to curl under so I think that'll fix that and it'll be much more flattering around that widest point of my body and of course it needs sleeves so that's the part that I'm on is I just have to add two sleeves to it but I put so much work into this over the weekend uh, I I mostly work on this, so, yes. And now you can tell my daylight is starting to disappear, so I need to wrap this up. Yeah, so I did my, worked on my weekender sweater, and I'm so happy um, that that worked out, because I was worried. Um, yeah. And then I did actually get a little bit of spinning done the 
Is it the previous weekend? It was the previous weekend. So not this most recent weekend, but the previous one. Uh, I got a bit of spinning done, and it's still on the bobbin because I'm lazy, <laughs> but I, I wanted to show it to you on the bobbin. So I am, of course, still working on this uh, fleece that I purchased late last year. I'm trying to remember, the breed. this is Coopworth, is the breed of the sheep, and it's in this beautiful dark uh, black gray color. Uh, there are light gray bits that mix with the dark gray bits and it just looks really pretty. Uh, but yeah, so I need to skein this up using my Nitty Naughty and I need to give it another good wash. It feels really good, but another good hot soak in really hot water with some dish soap should get some of those extra oils out and just make this superb yarn. So this will be my fourth um, full bobbin of this yarn, which by the way, uh, I cannot fit four ounces on these bobbins. I'd say I can probably only fit two ounces if that helps give you um, some context. So my spinning wheel is an Ashford traditional spinning wheel and I believe it has all of its original parts on it and the original flyer, that's the part name, <laughs> uh, only accommodates uh, these smaller bobbins. So uh, that's what I have to work with. But and if you're a spinner, you know um, Upgrading parts on a spinning wheel isn't necessarily the cheapest thing, so uh, I say if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm just going to stick with these smaller bobbins. And maybe, maybe one day I'll change that, but not for now. And I'm seriously losing my light. Look, at, I look so red now. And I have lost my natural lighting. The sun has gone down past my backyard fence, so I've turned on this light in the dining room uh, just to finish up this last part of the episode. So um, I need to share with you guys some yarn that I have been dyeing. Uh, it has been, I don't even know how many weeks since my last episode, and I really apologize. I've been uh, really just overwhelmed with all the things at work going on and I've been coming home just utterly exhausted with no energy, no time. Um, I've come home, eaten some food, and just gone to bed. I've been so tired. So um, I super apologize for not being energetic enough to put on a podcast, but uh, yeah, and then I was going to record a podcast, and then I had to, like, be an adult and deal with a situation which drained all the positive energy out of my body and <laughs> left me as a very cranky person. And so I took that night off as well. So it's been interesting. But anyway, in between all of that stuff, uh, on there were a few occasions where I found some time to dye some yarn. So let me go grab those colorways so I can show you guys uh, what you can look forward to in the Etsy shop. Okay, so first of all, um, and I did post about this one on Instagram, I did uh, color, I did dye a new uh, self-striping colorway, and this is called Mount Rainier in my uh, National Parks colorway collection, I guess. Uh, and I did knit up the first two color repeats so you could see how this stripes up. So previously I've only done um, a four color sequence. And this one has 
six colors. So since Michael made me a warping mill, because uh, when we moved my warping board didn't make it, uh, so he made me a warping mill, which means uh, it's much easier for me to try out new lengths on the self-striping yarn. So this is a six color repeat. So we have uh, white, purple, yellow, red, green, and blue. And I'll put in a picture here showing uh, where the inspiration came from. So um, when I took, after we moved here in August and <laughs> my parents helped me and we wanted to go uh, touring a little bit in the area before they had to go back home. So we went up to Mount Rainier National Park and that was my first time going and it was really pretty. And um, whenever we go places, we pick up magnets as souvenirs. So our fridge back here is covered in magnets and it's awesome. And uh, anyway, so there were really pretty uh, wild flowers out and against the snowy mountain, it just looked really pretty. So that was the inspiration for the Mount Rainier colorway. So that is available in the shop. Um, I also went ahead and renewed the listings for the other National Parks colorways, including uh, Yellowstone National Park and uh, Grand Teton National Park. Uh, and then I got bit by the Valentine's Day bug and I wanted to dye up some Valentine's Day-ish inspired colorways. So I thought, instead of going full on Valentine's Day, I would uh, channel some, I guess you could call them romantic comedies, from the 90s. Uh, movies that I watched when I was growing up and sometimes enjoy re-watching to reminisce. So the first colorway I'm going to show you is Sleepless in Seattle which I think is also appropriate for moving to Tacoma slash Seattle. So I'm showing you this with horrible lighting. So what I'll do is um, I'll show it to you real quick and then I'll put in some glamour shots that I took earlier today. Uh, but yeah, so this is Sleepless in Seattle, the Meg Ryan, Tom Hanks movie. Uh, and so uh, it made me think of, you know, nighttime in Seattle with all the lights. Um, and then there's a cover photo of the movie um, with uh, the dark, um, I think it's the Empire State Building with the red heart um, in the windows. Anyway, so it made me think of that. So this is Sleepless in Seattle. So it's got this um, like charcoal gray on a good chunk here uh, mixed in with some light gray and then this real nice pop of red and pink in the skein there. And so I'm really excited to see how this knits up. Now, do keep in mind, I am showing you these on mini skeins, so I test out my new colorways on mini skeins, and then I um, just increase the quantities to make them into full skeins. So that's Sleepless in Seattle, which is super fun. And then, excuse me, I thought, okay, well, that's kind of dark, like you know, kind of gothic Valentine's Day sort of style. So I thought, well, I should have something that's a little more light and cheery, if you will. Uh, so this one is Can't Buy Me Love <laughs> with Patrick Dempsey. Uh, so this is Can't Buy Me Love. It's, um, it's got pinks and reds and speckles and it's got a light gray 
background incorporated and so it's just going to knit up to be this real delicate uh, colorway and I just love how when I speckle in the yarn I speckle the colors onto the yarn how it um, sometimes spreads out in the water a little bit and just kind of mixes and blends together and just becomes this really unique um, super cool looking thing but anyway all I have to say this is Can't Buy Me Love and Sleepless in Seattle so I was just inspired by you know romantic love story movies that I used to watch growing up as a as a teenager in the 90s and I just thought I'd kind of bring them back a little bit. And when going through and looking up uh, movies from the 90s, you know, they said they were, can we call those romantic comedies? Is that correct? I suppose we can. But uh, it was just interesting to see um, Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan were in Sleepless in Seattle and You've Got Mail. Were they in any others together? I can't think of any right now, but I think that's, I mean, even just two movies together is, is kind of interesting, but yep. So uh, you can look forward to uh, my rom-com colorways in the shop as well as the self-striping, which I've already put away in its bag again, <laughs> uh, colorways. So you can look for those in the Etsy shop. And I will provide a link to the shop down below in the description box for your convenience. Uh, so you can just click down there and check it out. So there we go with colorways. Yay! Anyway, I anticipate this episode getting a little bit longer. Uh, so I'm going to cut it short right here. I did do a bit of gardening and whatnot, so I will update you on that in the next episode. So until next time, I hope you have um, a good weekend, a good week, <laughs> and that you enjoy your crafts, whatever they might be. So until next time, my friends, happy knitting.